Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Hoyt Archery, Fuse Accessories, Realtree, Muddy Outdoors, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Scott Archery, Frigid Forage, Trophy Rock, Easton Arrows, RTP Outdoors, Non-Typical Wildlife Solutions, Ozonics, Wilderness Athlete, Grizzly Coolers, Redneck Hunting Blinds, and Nikon. Hey guys, Mike Valier here. Chad Lathrop behind the camera. Second gun season, December the 10th. Cold front came through, we're set up here on a sweet little food plot, standing corn and some turnips. Chad's been in here, had an encounter with a really sweet buck, really good deer. And we are trying to catch up to him as a south wind tonight, so we're really kind of in a bow setup, trying to make it work with the muzzleloader, so. Bow hunting with extended range, gotta love it. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully the deer show up and hopefully the big boy comes in, so. We are out chasing a deer we call High Roller tonight. Nasty, wintry, snowy mix, rain, overlooking a sweet turnip plot. Uh, deer haven't really been hitting turnips this year, but uh, typically this plot late season is really good. Chad and I have both had some success over it um, in the late gun season, second gun, and late muzzleloader here in southern Iowa. So um, here we are, second day, second gun. We actually want to be sitting on another plot um, that we have on this farm, but due to the northwest wind, we couldn't get in there. Um, so we're kind of going here. We, we don't have pictures of high roller. We have one picture of him in here in the morning, one morning. Hopefully, uh, history proves uh, above trail cameras today, and he shows up in this plot for us. So. second gun here in Iowa and we are headed into the heart of the storm. It's 12 degrees, 25 mile an hour winds, blowing snow, and the ground's kind of ice covered. We got a little ice too. We, uh, boy, we were, we were 15 minutes away from being heroes yesterday, potentially. Snuck into the blind and bumped a couple, one good one for sure. I don't think it's the deer we're after. High roller's the deer that we're after. It's Buck that Chad named. Um, he's kind of, he's kind of gotten by us this year. We've been close a couple different times. Um, I've had them at 40. Chad's had them within 30 on a couple occasions. Um, so I kind of renamed him Felix because he's got nine lives. This thing just, we're so close, but yet so far, just like you, like you often are with these big bucks. But So last night was pretty much like nails on a chalkboard. We snuck in, bumped deer on our way in, had deer come into the plot, spook. Wind was supposed to be southeast. It ended up being east, straight east and northeast, which was not the right wind for where we were set up. And, uh, it was it was a long stressful night uh, we don't really like bumping deer and we pretty much did it all night long so um, we're headed back in there tonight nasty cold brutal um, kind of one of those nights where you're wondering are they just gonna you know tuck in in bed all day and and not even really feed or is it gonna really push them to get out there and feed and feed early so we're headed in a little bit earlier than what we normally have been getting in and uh, hopefully the right one shows up so we're gonna get in there try and catch up to high roller or Felix or some other big buck here in Iowa so we're gonna give it a shot hard not to 
like you sweated up when you got this much clothes on. Lots of times we can come through the field to access this, but that's with the southwest, southeast wind. Today we got northwest coming in the back way. Probably blow the whole field out again like yesterday. Hopefully not. than yesterday as far as accessing goes we'll see now if we even see a deer we may have just blown them all out yesterday and that's why we didn't spook any on the way in today hopefully they put the feed bag on hopefully this cold weather snowstorm coming they say one to three inches so we'll see what happens number he's, he's he's a visible giant deer um, we, we've had a bunch of encounters with him Chad's pretty much set his sights on this deer and it comes to gun season and you know we're in here together and it, it, it doesn't get any better we've logged a lot of hours in a tree together over the years moments like this just don't happen that often it's just so cool it's, it's such a rush it's just an awesome deer first deer on the plot today yesterday we you you couldn't have messed up a food plot more than what Chad and I did yesterday and we just felt we're usually really good about that, about access and doing everything right. And, you know, we thought today, man, maybe they'll feed, maybe we won't see a deer, we don't know, but we just had to stick in here on this deer and... <sighs> Doesn't get any better. That's why we do what we do. It's an albino. <laughs> yeah, that's a pie ball. Is that, is that against the rules? Well, here it is, December 17th, second to last day of second gun season. And it all came together. It's, you can't really use words to describe how sweet this is. We put a lot of time, a lot of effort into chasing these whitetails and it's almost hard to believe when it actually works. We spend so much time failing at it, day after day, week after week. Finally came together for Chad and I, just doesn't done get any better than this. Had pictures of him last year, late season, he had broke G2s on both sides and He's a deer that pretty much took up our season. We've, we've been hunting him all year. Chad's had multiple encounters with him. He's gotten the better of us on a couple different sets and he's, he's just seemed to get away from us. But tonight, second to last day of second gun season, felt the need to feed, came to our cut corn, standing corn plot and gave us, gave us a crack at him. So couldn't be happier. Just doesn't get any better than this. It's hard to believe, but it's December 19th, which means the lead season opened up today here in Iowa. I got the muzzleloader out with me this afternoon. I'm hunting over a standing soybean plot, and I think it should be a pretty good evening. 
It's gonna get up to the mid 20s today and we're right on kind of the uptick of a warm up here in Iowa. It's been a pretty stiff cold front here the past week or so. The past couple days there's been lows down below zero with wind chill readings down to negative 20, negative 30 degrees. So these deer have really been through some harsh conditions here in the past week and we're kind of right on the warm up here. So I think this should be a night where they're up early, kind of catching some of that sun. It's a high pressure day and we came in late winter here and we burned off this field. It used to be a switchgrass field, but we decided to change up our food plot locations here for this particular spot and make this hill kind of our late season spot. So we can have the redneck right up on top of the hill, backed up against the fence. We blow any type of a west wind out over the CRP field, and then we have the plot screen planted to cover us up getting in and getting out. That way we don't have to get down in next to these deer where they're bedding. It's really a pretty bulletproof spot. There's one buck in particular that I'm going after late season, and he's been using this spot pretty much since the middle of summer. Uh, we named him the short G2 buck. He's a really nice 10 pointer. We weren't sure if he made it through gun season or not, but I just checked the camera that we have set up on this gate opening and he made it through. He was on there. The uh, last time that he was on was December 17th, which would have been two days ago. And he showed up on the 13th, I think, the 14th, 16th. He was just showing up pretty regularly right around 5 p.m. Uh, right in this spot here. So that's still legal shooting time. So if he does that again this afternoon, there's a chance that I, I could get a shot at him. So I'm excited. I love late season. It's always nice to get out and see a bunch of deer funnel into your food plots. about quarter after three right now right out in the middle of the field about 200 yards down towards the end of it the short g2 buck was there he was out there with a younger buck just kind of minding his own business and a little six pointer started chasing around a bunch of does and just making all kinds of noise but that short g2 buck went to the south here into this piece of timber and i he's bedded down right now he's bedded probably 200 yards away the wind's perfect for where they're at right now I'm not going to shoot past 150 yards today. So he's going to have to close to within that. Ideally, I'd like to have him about 100 yards. So anyways, the buck that we're after is bedded 200 yards away. So we'll see how it plays out. But at least we know he's wanting to use this field.
I think I hit him good. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was just absolutely crazy. He got up out of his bed. He came right to the edge of those beans. He was at 133 yards. And then he got to where I could see his shoulder clear through my scope. So tough to tell with that smoke, it blew back into the blind. But I think when I saw him run away, he had his tail tucked and his head down. He looked like he was hit hard. Oh my gosh. Look at this deer. Oh my gosh. I just cannot believe how that all came together. <laughs> it's December 19th, the opening day of late muzzleloader here in Iowa. We knew that we had a good shot to kill this deer late season. He's been using this area of the farm, this particular field, all year long. Um, middle of the summer, he started showing up pretty consistently and he just has not stopped hammering this area. It felt right, right when I got up in the blind this afternoon. Um, it's a high pressure starting to warm up. We were right on the uptick of this warm front moving in after a real brutal cold front. And a lot of times late season, those are my favorite days to hunt. The cold fronts are really, really good, but if you can catch that first day after it starts to warm up, um, that tends to be really, really good as well. The strategy with this hunt is pretty much just a textbook late season hunting strategy. And the key to this being successful is coming in and burning this field late winter and getting it planted in soybeans because I bet I saw 20 deer down in that bottom field um, where our late season plot was last year and they were coming off that hillside and coming out of this patch of timber right here. So had we tried to move in and hunt that redneck that we had late last year down in there I would have bumped a bunch of those deer out. So we got the blind put up on the fence here on top of the hill, I was blowing my wind back out over that CRP. And this guy came out in the field at quarter to three, so he was up moving real early. Um, we haven't been in here, hasn't had any pressure, and as you can see, it paid off in a big way. Really couldn't draw it up uh, any better way. This is just an absolutely phenomenal deer, and uh, a hunt that I'll remember for a long, long time. These guys have really got me fired up for some late season hunting. I've got, uh, I went out last night and uh, I saw a buck that uh, I've nicknamed the Tight Rack 10. And he was in this fruit plot behind me. I'm heading back there again tonight. But I was really surprised to see him. This is not the range where we were picking up pictures of that buck back in October. I mean, he's a good half a mile away from there. So that just kind of shows you that this time of the year, uh, the deer will move quite a bit to find the food sources. The spot we're going to is one of the better spots. It's a big and beastie food plot. It's one of the better food sources in this whole area. So I'm sure we're attracting deer from you know, a fairly large circle. I'll show you what we see tonight and uh, maybe I can get lucky and, and get that buck to come in a little bit closer. He was right in my pocket last night, but something spooked the deer and just before I could uh, get a good open shot on him, the field cleared. So maybe tonight will be a different story. It's been mild. But for some reason, uh, the deer have not minded this mild weather at all. They were moving really well last night. I heard uh, several gunshots from late muzzleloader hunters, and I know uh, there were some other good deer that were killed in the neighborhood last night, and it was 45 degrees during the day. So we're going to get out there and give it a try and see what comes out tonight, and I'll close the episode from the redneck blind. I'm shooting. That got him, didn't it? Yeah. Well, that was an exciting night in the blind. This will be a good way for me to close the show this week. 
Uh, I'm sure you can tell that something good happened there. So I'll come back again next week and we'll have the whole episode for you, the hunt for the tight rack 10. Well, I appreciate you joining me this week. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.